Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at the most powerful iGPU on the market right now. Well, when I say the most powerful in synthetic benchmarks, it's definitely beating out everything. Certain games were getting a much higher frame rate, but we do have to turn the wattage up on this. What we're taking a look at today are Intel's brand new Meteor Lake integrated art graphics. I've got the Ultra 7 155H in this MSI laptop. I did a review on it. And with that review, we could only go up to around 45 watts. But since then, I've been doing a lot of tweaking and tuning. And from the BIOS, I was actually able to access the advanced BIOS settings on this MSI laptop. And now I can throw more wattage at this chip, allowing for higher clocks on the CPU and especially that new ArcEye GPU. We definitely have a lot to go over in this video, but before we dive a bit deeper, I do want to mention that. This video is brought to you by URCD Keys. I've actually been using this site for a couple years now. They do offer Steam Keys, Origin, Uplay. They even offer Microsoft applications like Office. But the main reason that I use URCD Keys is for their Windows Keys. Right now, their Windows 10 Pro OEM key is $19.84. But if you use code ETA at checkout, you can get 25% off. And another great thing about buying from here is they do accept PayPal. I just did this build here. I need to activate Windows. I'm going to head over to my updates and security. We're going to go to activation. As you can see, I've got Windows 10 Pro, but it's not activated. So I'm going to change product key. I'm going to paste it in here. Choose next. Choose activate. And Windows is now activated. We're ready to go. My warning is totally gone. And basically, that's it. They'll email your code once your payment is processed. And that's basically it. If you're interested in picking up cheap Windows 10 keys for your new PC builds, I'll leave a link in the description. Highest I've been able to go here is 64 watts, and uh, it looks like 64 watts is kind of going to be the max for this chip, but it is a mobile chip. And of course, you know, when we're talking about an iGPU for, let's say, a handheld gaming PC, we don't want these to be running at 65 watts in a handheld because we're not going to get great battery life. But it's still a bit early, and this was really the only way I could send enough power to this iGPU to see what it really can do. And I'll tell you, now with it set up like this, we're actually seeing some pretty good performance. All right, so here it is. Now this thing does get hot at 64 watts, so I had to pull the bottom of the laptop off, and I've got a cooling solution. Basically, it's just a fan blowing right on it. And uh, it does stay pretty cool that way. I've also set the fan from the BIOS to 100%. So it is kind of noisy right now. But this is just really testing. Wanted to get into this and really see what this new Arc GPU can do. As you can see, Ultra 7 155H. This has 32 gigabytes of DDR5 RAM at 6400 megahertz. And of course, we've got that new Arc iGPU. First things first. Initial launch of this, I could not get ARC control panel to work. We now have it working with the latest update. If I head to performance here, our GPU clock is going to be listed right here. I want to show you this real quick. We'll go ahead and stress this out. Now, what I found so far is this runs at up to around 28 watts when it's set up correctly. And this will go up to 2250. Yeah, that's the highest clock here. Now, if you take a look at the GPU core power, this is not total core power. This is CPU and GPU right now, and we're not really putting a load on the CPU, so it is pulling quite a bit. And even though I have this set at a 64 watt TDP, it's still a bit of a power struggle between the GPU and the CPU. I didn't disable any of the efficiency cores or anything like that from the BIOS. I did think about it, but I kind of wanted to leave all that alone just to see if I could get enough power to this new GPU. And performance really isn't bad at these higher wattages, but at lower wattages, really hard to kind of be the 780M. If you're not familiar with these new Meteor Lake chips, it's totally fine because these just released a few days ago as making this video. What I've got here is the Ultra 7 155H. 16 cores, 22 threads. We do have a max turbo frequency up to 4.8 and maximum assured power here. 65 watts. Now every single laptop is going to be different. It's probably going to be running around 28. Moving down a bit, this is the interesting part, the new ArcEye GPU. So with this, we get that max clock up to 2,250 megahertz. Eight XE cores does support ray tracing. And right now I'm not even going to try any ray tracing. But the specs on paper do look very similar to the A380. Now, of course, this is all integrated into the Meteor Lake chip, so it's not going to be running at the kind of wattage the A380 can. Even the low-profile version runs at only up to around 45 watts, 
And like I mentioned, the way it is right now, this is actually going up to around 28. And then the other thing we need to factor in is we're not using G DDR6 VRAM like a dedicated ARC GPU would. We've got DDR5 here. Through my initial testing, running benchmarks and games, I didn't see really great performance, and that's because we were just relying on the stock power profile of this specific laptop that I have, which was pretty low. It wasn't sending enough power to the iGPU. But since I've been able to up the TDP and get more power to the iGPU, I re-ran these benchmarks. And now with 3D Mark Night Raid, we're at 31,377. So this isn't bad at all. And it is beating out the Radeon 780M, even in the higher end HS chips at higher wattages. Those are around 28,000. So not too far off, but it is a little bit higher here with this synthetic. Next up, we've got Firestrike with an 8,679. Again, beating out the Radeon 780M. They're around 7,800. And finally, we've got Time Spy, and this is coming in with a 4,003. This is by far the highest score I've ever seen out of any integrated graphics on the market so far. Uh, the Radeon 780M in the 7940HS at 80 watts, I've been able to score around a 3,300. So we are significantly higher here with this Arc iGPU in Time Spy, but is this going to equate to better gameplay? In synthetics, yeah, it's beaten out the Radeon 780M for sure. And the first game we have here is Forza Horizon 5, 1080p, low settings. We got an average of around 87 FPS, which is actually really good to hear. I know we're at low. And if you take a look at Afterburner, you can see our GPU 99% usage. It's only clocked up to 2100 megahertz and it's pulling around 28 watts. Moving down just a bit, you can see that our total CPU package power is right there, 63, 64 watts. So we're right on the money with the way I have it set up in the BIOS. Next up, we've got OG Skyrim. Definitely wanted to throw this one in. 1080p, high. Since we've got an older game here, the CPU and GPU doesn't need to work as hard. But you can see that that GPU power is still right there, 27, 28 watts. Total power draw here is a lot lower, coming in and up to 35 watts with this game. And we actually got an average of 108 FPS. I am connected to a 120 hertz monitor. So with this older stuff, yeah, I mean, this Arc i GPU is going to handle it just fine. Here's another older one, Half-Life 2, 1080p, very high, so we're maxed out. Average of 284 FPS. Again, very low usage here. Even the GPU power has only dipped down to around 20 to 21 watts. This setup here handles Street Fighter 6 really well. I could probably take some of these settings up, but going into it, I just went to 1080p low to see what we could do here. And yeah, we're at 60 FPS, and that's exactly where you want to be with a fighting game. I really wanted to test out MK1, but the game kept crashing on me, so uh, definitely need some updates for those drivers there. Here's Spider-Man Miles Morales, and this is some really great performance for this game. We've really tried to get this game to run at full speed on the 780M or basically any iGPU. And with the latest driver updates from AMD and the developers of the game, we've seen some really good performance. But going right into this with this new Arc iGPU, 1080p low, we got an average of 65 FPS, which is way more than I thought. And throughout my gameplay here, I didn't see it dip under 60 FPS. Here's God of War, and with this one, I had to drop it down to 900p. At 1080p, even with FSR set to ultra performance, we were seeing around the same kind of frame rate here, and I've run into bugs before with uh, dedicated ARC GPUs, where changing the settings really doesn't change anything in-game. Usually requires a reboot, and I tried it with this, but unfortunately, I just don't think we're pushing enough power to run this at 1080 yet. And the final game I wanted to test here was Cyberpunk 2077 1080p low. And I'll tell you, the 780M does handle this a lot better. I use the exact same settings that I do with the 780M. And on that, at this kind of wattage, 64 watts, we can get an average of around 78 FPS. Right now, we've only got an average of 61. And when it comes to the screen tearing, I forgot to turn on V-Sync. Usually happens with my game capture with it turned off. So yeah, these new ARC integrated graphics are pretty good, but uh, of course we are at a much higher wattage than we want to be if we were going to put this inside of a handheld. 
It's still early and you know, more optimizations could definitely come down the road. Basically what I'm doing here is just trying to get enough to get those clocks up on the iGPU and also have enough for the CPU to perform well also. If I was to go into the BIOS and set this at a 15 watt TDP and then try to rerun those game tests, it's not going to perform like our Ryzen handhelds with the 7840U or the Ryzen Z1 Extreme. Unfortunately, with the way they've got everything set up right now, I do need to just kind of overpower this chip to see this kind of performance. But maybe later on down the road with more optimizations, we could see better performance out of this at lower wattages. I personally can't wait until the mini PCs start hitting the market with these new Meteor Lake chips. I think we're going to see some really awesome stuff. And I know there are a few manufacturers out there have kind of already announced a few. And as soon as I can get my hands on a couple, I will be doing a lot of testing. But that's going to wrap it up for my initial look at this new Arc i GPU in Meteor Lake. It's a great performer at higher wattages. And yeah, it's beaten out the 780M in synthetics and a lot of the games that we saw here at 64 watts. But bringing this on down, it's just not going to match that type of performance yet. If you've got any questions or if there's anything else you want to see running on these new Meteor Lake iGPUs, let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.